how to fucking believe in yourself and really quiet your inner voice in this voice that says you or tells you no you can't do this even though it's fucking wrong at least i hope so <laughs> hello and welcome back to the next episode of the self-development with tactics fucking podcast pretty fucking pumped as always to be here because it, because it is always a great feeling to just you know be in this long term or long form format because yeah you know all these 16 seconds 60 seconds um instagram videos or social media videos um quite in general and that's satisfying you know i like to talk i like to just really kind of expose everything that i'm thinking about and this is what i'm able to do here and i guess this is also contributing all the people more um that actually listening to what i'm saying or actually just watching the episode like yeah but today uh, i'm not gonna lose any time because i'm too quite not into just actually being on overtime or just doing some overtime like you know the last few episodes actually um so actually doing more than 30 minutes because i'm pretty late right now you know i i run pretty late because i had to do um yeah you know i came home i worked out and then i had just to to cook for myself some food and it's just you know took some time to be honest which is totally okay like i remember i fucking remember i do just you know i cooked something and it is it is in the pot like it's it's still in the pot and the pot is outside of any fridge or it's not outside um because it's not cold enough and there's some fish inside like you know it's it's not gonna be that well if i'm just letting it be there overnight or something so i'm just gonna uh <laughs> write me a little note to um and put it somewhere i hope that i'm not gonna hmm <laughs> where could i put it i could actually put it like yeah i do it like there somehow i really hope that i'm not gonna just you know kind of um yeah forget it or something but yeah um without being just yeah you know that's nice uh without being too much into the overtime thing i guess we are just going ahead with the actual thing that we're going to talk about today, which is um, four ways to quiet imposter syndrome and start believing in yourself. I do hope I haven't had a look at the whole article, actually, you know, um, for the podcast listeners. It's from the ideas.tet.com website once again. I think it's a really great website and, you know, the articles are quite short, which leads me to, yeah, more speaking time, actually, rather than just a lot of reading time which is actually the case with most of the book summaries that i'm going through but yeah let's see i'm pretty uh pretty interested in it it's still quite a quite something to read you know or maybe it just you know looks like this because um yeah you know my window is so small that everything is so compressed and so quite uh yeah kind of stretched into length but yeah, I'm not gonna just waste any time of yours and mine. So four ways to quiet imposter syndrome and start believing in yourself. Many of us have an inner voice telling us we lucked into what we have or we are fraud. And that's normal. The problem is when we, when we believe it. Here is how to start recognizing your own worth from coach and consultant Tania or Tania, Ketan or Katen. It is T-A-N-I-A. And K A T T A N. Uh, so I'm about to get on stage at one of the largest tech confer conferences in the world, which is the Cisco Life, with you know two C's, um, like C, the letter, and two C's, Cisco. It's not with an S or something. And then I'm supposed to share some wisdom that will inspire thousands of people to embrace their inner their inner superhero. No biggie. Insert emoji face screaming in fear. <laughs> uh, always quite nice. If, you know, if people actually use this some, you know, kind of way of communicating, like, okay, just leaving something out, but still kind of writing it down. I, yeah, quite enjoy this. Once in a while. Like, you know, not every single time, but sometimes. 
Um, so just, uh, just so you know, I love public speaking, but um, that doesn't mean I don't channel channel my inner scarcity cat when starting out into a sea of smart, capable and curious people. My nerves start acting up, especially when I'm reminded that it's me, a 5 foot 3 inch nerd with a tendency towards seasonal eczema about to tell a room full of real, largely acne-free superheroes how to be a superhero. And, you know, by the way, because I'm just recognizing it somehow, even though it's meant funny, um, do not just shit on yourself. Like, there are so many people, and there are so many people in this world that actually would shit on you. Like, there are people like this, unfortunately, and um, people that will judge you, people that will talk shit about you and all these things. So it might be a great idea to not beat yourself quite. You know, don't beat yourself up for things that are just totally normal. I'm quite speaking about, you know, some um, cognitive distortions right now, which, um, yeah, I'm, I'm actually kind of seeing it, I think, on a daily basis that some people have this kind of, um, yeah, problems with actually seeing the reality. Like, you know, cognitive distortions are actually ways you are and or your brain is practically kind of manipulating the way you're just seeing or actually kind of recognizing the outside world, so quite the reality. The problem there is, is that, and I've been talking about it before, and maybe you just can look up a summary and or and a single episode where I've been talking about cognitive distortion. I think you should be totally, you know, be able to actually find one of these, which is totally great. It's a really great topic, and I do think that a lot of people will just really benefit from it because it has something to do actually with recognizing it, first of all. Like, if you know that you're just, you know, shitting on yourself and if you're just really kind of recognizing the world somehow differently than it actually is, at my point of view at least, it's the really first step to actually kind of uh, better yourself. But um, to make it short and simple, please don't shit on yourself. Like, you know, there, as I said, there are so many people who are still doing it, so just, you know, keep your mind, like, clean of it and keep your mind positive and not just shitting on yourself and something that I recognize you know I totally do not want to say that um, I'm not doing this you know never ever and whatsoever this is not what's what's the real thing or it is not the truth I shit on myself sometimes as well and but every time when I'm seeing it I quite even somehow loudly tell myself that's not true or shut the fuck up or something like this because I feel like if I wouldn't do it, it could actually be part of it or it could actually get, you know, a part of me and a part of just, you know, who I am. And this is not something that I want. So please don't shit in yourself, even though, you know, sometimes it's meant funny or some shit like this. I understand it. I totally understand it. But I don't know yet. I really don't know yet where the border is quite. Where is the border between, okay, actually it is funny and it is okay and you shouldn't do it. Like, you know, obviously, you know, if you're really shitting on yourself, it's wrong. Like, quote-unquote wrong. At my point of view, it's it's not the best idea to do or the best thing to do. For sure, it's not wrong. But um, I wouldn't just really suggest people to do it. And this is what I want to say or I want to kind of communicate. Like, um, so yeah, just, you know, don't shit on yourself. Like, why? Really, why? What's the benefit of it? Most of the time, there is no benefit. There really is no benefit. So, holy fraud, Batman. Uh, I'm scheduled, I am scheduled to speak right after the senior vice president of Cisco Systems and right before Lieutenant Carrie Lawrence, the first woman lieutenant, or lieutenant, lieutenant, I don't know, I think you know what I mean, to fly an F-14 Tomcat in the US Navy, talk about uh, intimidating. <laughs> Um, I kind of feel it. I really feel it and I just really enjoy the way she's actually writing it because, by the way, because I'm actually kind of, um, kind of pointing it out already, I appreciate those little things. Like, you know, life is, is pretty great. You know, I'm, I'm quite always talking about, okay, life is really great and whatsoever. Sometimes it's not. It's obviously not great and not good and not just funny and whatsoever all the time. For sure, there are some, some, some times where just, you know, things are fucked up. Things don't work out as, you know, want them to work out and all, you know, these things. But 
just really appreciate and be grateful for all the little things. Like, you know, if there is a cat, um, I think it was actually in 12 Rules of Life by Jordan B. Peterson. And the 12th rule, if I'm actually remembering correctly, um, by the way, if you're interested in it, uh, all the links down to the uh, to the podcast and or to the YouTube videos, wherever you are, are always in the description of the certain episode. So yeah, you know, you are always able to kind of um, access them and also just a little summary of what I'm going to talk about in this certain episode so that you can actually see, okay, you know, this episode is something that I'm pretty into too or this is an episode that I just, you know, want to skip and just go through something else, you know, which is totally understandable. Like, you know, that everybody has the time to actually go through 30 minutes of video or 30 minutes of podcast, you know, quite really understandable for me. But still, um, he pointed out, so Sean B. Peterson in his book pointed out that you should actually kind of, you know, he was giving a, giving an example of a cat. You know, if a cat really comes up to you and just is kind of, you know, uh, what is this actually called? You know, it's going around your feet and it's like, Yeah, I don't fucking know what to say. <laughs> I don't know what it's called, but I think you know what I mean. You know, if this cat is really into you and really into kind of cuddling with you or whatever it will be, then just, you know, pet it or something. Like, engage with it and just really appreciate that this certain cat is there at this certain moment. Because it's not always going to be the case. Like, like yeah, you know... If it's, you know, well weather outside and you can just, you know, do whatever you want and do especially things that you really appreciate, also appreciate the weather, that you're actually able to do what you're doing right now. I think that's very important and I've seen it so often, like in every single book about self-help and just being the best version of yourself, all the people and all the authors are actually pointing out to, to some degree in the book that you should actually be grateful and kind of appreciate what you're having. You know, it also has to do with actually focusing on what you're having rather than what you don't have. Um, and I would really like to quote Hen. It's not called Hendrix, I guess. I think it, he is. It's a musician, and Hendrix, Hendrix, or it was actually Hendrix. I don't know, but he said it's about willing what you want, and not about wanting what you. Ha- it's it's about having what you want or wanting it's <laughs> i'm very sorry it's about wanting what you have and not having what you want and it has just really been kind of yeah i've just really been liking it like you know it makes sense and as you can notice right now my fucking light just went off or went out whatever uh gonna fix it just you know when my tv is actually you know turning itself on and everything here you've heard it probably <laughs> but yeah um, so palms, uh, palms a little sweaty, I climb up on the stage, or onto the stage. I stare into the sea of faces and ask, are there any superheroes here today? I take a breath and continue, that's right, we all are born superheroes, then we spend the rest of our lives apologizing for it. Just like that, I'm off and running. The minutes pass faster than a lo- locomotive, or locomotive, and I exit the stage in a post-talk fog. Standing there is the first woman. Standing there is the first woman F-14 Tomcat fighter pilot who says, uh, "How I'm going to follow that? You were amazing." And this is just mean. And this is just a really great example of why just giving a compliment or just saying something nice to some people randomly, even though it you know wasn't that randomly uh, or random at all could mean just a ton for this certain person like it really did for her i assume i really assume so just do it as well like i think it's a great article it really is a great article it gives me a lot of things to actually talk about in just a quite a different aspect to be honest but still i guess it's somehow working out um so but there is the thing until that moment, I was totally convinced that I had blanked in the middle of my talk, farted or used the effort. I was positive the wave of applause was actually an explosive, an explosion, explosion of booze. Um, I was totally convinced. But why? You know, 
gonna be pretty interesting, I guess. So isn't it amazing how sometimes the only difference between feeling like an imposter and a superhero is finding out who other people see, um, see you from the outside? But what if we could channel that outsider all the time? Like, what if we could carry a fighter pilot around in our pockets to constantly remind us how awesome we are? And we actually believe it. So if you often feel like a fraud or phony or worry that someone is going to call bulls, tea on you, <laughs> tea on you at any moment, you're, you're not alone. It's been proven that the more accomplished we are, the more likely we are to feel like an imposter. In fact, the more I coach and consult with some of the most hardworking, intelligent and super successful business leaders, performers, movers and shakers, the more I hear, I feel like an imposter. Can you help me with that? I think it's, it's pretty, pretty interesting. I'm just, you know, really trying to kind of feel or see somehow, a, you know, correlation between the success and actually feeling bad about it and it could actually somehow you know this is the first thing that i'm just thinking about but if you know something and you just really are kind of just yeah really into what you're thinking about this or whatsoever and you're just really sure about what you what you would say in my situation just you know <laughs> kind of tell you please write it down in the comments or just you know dm me on instagram or wherever you are or whatever you know platform you like you know you could choose between Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, uh, quite Quora as well, Tumblr as well. I'm not using it that often, to be honest. And also LinkedIn. And definitely YouTube and the podcast actually is also quite working in terms of Anchor, actually. Um, so yeah, just hit me up, tell me, and I will just uh, yeah talk about it in the next episode if I'm just, you know, uh, I will. You know, there has never been the thing, actually. Like, nobody ever had just, you know, talked to me or had just, you know, written a comment about something in the video actually somehow um at least it didn't feel like it you know there were some comments but i felt like okay you know these are just comments about like most of the time self-advertisement and whatsoever but that's okay i understand it um i kind of feel like like you know if there's just really 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 uh kind of successful person i guess you're just really used to performing and to performing good and just maybe even kind of hearing from the people, okay, you know, this was good what you were doing or, you know, all the people are amazed and all the people are like, you know, how did you do this and whatsoever. And I guess um, the successful you get, the more also the people also just um, expect from you. Like, you know, they really expect like, okay, he's going to make the next kind of Google. He's going to make the, ne make the next Tesla or, or something like this. And um, I totally understand that some people quite, uh, yeah, just really get crippled by this, you know, in the long run. So the truth is we all are hard to act. Uh, we all are hard act to follow. So can we put a lid on those internal monologues? And while it often takes an outsider who believes in us to see what we are capable of, we can develop that capability inside ourselves too. We just got to do our homework, develop our skills and show up and continue to scale buildings like the superheroes we are. If you're not ready to embrace your inner superhero, do it for the young people in your life, just so they can see what it looks like to be scared, but do it anyway. Or do it for your colleagues, otherwise you're cheating them out of, the, uh, out of all the ideas, skills and connections you have developed and could develop, don't be stingy with your gifts. It's actually a great point. It really is a great point um, that really could also motivate people. Like, you know, you know, if you're not doing it for you, then just do it for somebody else. Like your mother, your brother, just somebody else you really appreciate and you really love. And I think this could actually be working. Like, yeah, I think people work like this. I'm just going to try. Um, so, yeah. So here are four creative ways to silence your fear and insecurity and unleash your superpowers. And I think I'm gonna just have to read through this whole thing because I'm actually pretty late. Pretty, pretty late. Um, <clears throat> so stop underselling yourself. A coaching client needed guidance. Uh, she would have she worked in technology 
uh, years earlier, then moved into finance and now wanted to get back into tech. She was interviewing with a position or for a position at a company I knew very well and asked for my insights. First, I assured her uh, that no one currently in that department has much direct technology experience as she had, or as much direct. Secondly, I told her that I knew the salaries of the last two people I had in this position, which were $70,000. And finally, I gave her a full blow rah rah pom poms in the app pep talk, which it wasn't difficult because she was totally and uniquely qualified for a job. A few days later, the company invited her to be part of the team. When they uh, brought up salary, she asked for 55000 and They offered her 50000 so she took the job. But the question is now, why? And I think she's going to answer it in the next paragraph. I hope at least. Um, actually, there was somehow a study, I don't remember which book it was or which kind of article it was, it, it probably was a book, and there was a, a study in it which was um, quite actually about why, um, or actually kind of no, uh, negotiation, and they actually said that most of the time, like really the majority of the time, women actually get a lower salary because they are not kind of negotiating on it, like, Men, in general, do negotiate about it way longer or way harder, whatever it will be, than women are doing, or women are doing. So, even though she was more qualified for the job than the last two people, she doubted herself and her experience. She had textbook, in textbook imposter syndrome, and as a result, Anna sold herself for, uh, to the tune of 20,000 in that first year alone. So how many times have you undersold yourself to an employer? And when you do, uh, when you do, not only are you leaving cash on the table, but you, but you are telling yourself and everyone around you that you don't value your abilities. Makes some sense. Really makes some sense. So the next time, try admitting that you're worth it. Admit that you have put in the work and admit that you are uniquely qualified for this opportunity. Admit your awesomeness, admit it again and again. The more we admit we have value, the more that valuable opportunities present themselves. Which makes sense. And I'm just going to have to drink something. Um, it really makes sense. Uh, because I really kind of think that if you're really kind of telling yourself over and over and over again that you're good that you can do what you're willing to do, that you're just a great person, that you're valuable for this certain job, you know, always kind, uh, or all these things just really kind of concentrated on job thing, and you're telling yourself, yeah, you're the best, and you're motivated, and whatsoever, I think if you just, you know, keep doing this for a longer period of time, I don't know, you know, how long it could be, but I really believe that, you know, this could actually be part of your subconscious mind, and then suddenly you're acting on it. Like, you know, you're just really doing it because it's part of your subconscious mind. And I think this is actually the first part of your brain and the first part of your body that's actually making all these decisions. And afterwards, your rational or conscious mind is actually turning itself on and, be, and is like, yeah, now, motherfucker, I'm fucking here. And you're like, you know, if it's talking bullshit... Uh, fuck off and just, you know, go away. But yeah. Um, so the second one is make your own iRock files. So iRock, like, you know, I'm super, I'm great. Files. So remember the Rockfold files or Rockford files, the TV show from the 1970s about Detective Jim Rockford, um, who was in prison for a crime he didn't commit. Once he got released, he lived... He lived in a ramshackle trailer while trying to launch his career as a private eye. He had career setbacks like we all do and yet still managed to rock his cases. Creative uh, tree, tree, tree spacing is a term I've coined to mean the ability to conjure or conjure is with a J like con and jure with a J. Imagination in any place at any time, knowing it will make you and others make and others more innovative, more energized, and more valuable in your work in the world. In your work in the world. As it's 
as its exponent. I spent years testing dozens of crazy status quo boosting practices. Jim Rockford was my inspiration for an act of creative tree spacing that I call the iRock files. It's time to become a private detective hot on your own trail. So create a physical file or a digital or both and gather evidence that proves the unique value you bring to work. Slide a glowing performance review in there. A printout of an email from a colleague or boss that praised you for a job well done. Um, press clippings from events you help produce reports showing goals achieved or surpassed. Thank you cards from customers, awards, certifications and so on. From teeny to extra special, every piece of evidence counts. Totally. It is actually a great thing. Like, you know, if you're once doubting yourself, or doubting actually, because I think you don't even kind of um, pronounce the, uh, the B there. So if you're really doubting yourself, so like, really, like, you know, just really feeling like, okay, I'm not good. I'm okay. Like, I'm doing a great job, but I'm only okay. And I really think that if you're just really going to these files, you're opening them up, you're just having a look at them, whether they're digital or physical now, but I do think just, you know, the physical pieces will have a greater impact on it, I guess, because, you know, there's a process of actually going to it, opening it, kind of looking inside it, and, you know, whatsoever. I do think, I kind of feel like it. I cannot even prove it, I cannot even tell you why I feel like this, but, uh, yeah, you're looking at them and seeing, okay, you have done well, you have done great things, you have done super great things, you've done amazing things, so why wouldn't you be able to do it right now? Like, especially when it's the same field, especially when it's quite the same job, or exactly the same job, so why wouldn't you be able to? Like, I think it's a great idea, it's really a great idea to actually pump you up and internalize that you are valuable and good, good at your craft, even though you might have doubts sometimes, you know, everybody has sometimes, but the thing is, you will do it. Like, if you really want it, I believe you will do it. It's always like this, you know, if really people are obsessed with what they're willing to do, they will always get there. Like, you know, Steve Jobs was obsessed about, you know, building Apple and, and all the other companies, Bill Gates as well you know, uh, Bezos as well, like, they all have been obsessed, something you can totally see, notice, recognize what everyone is saying, and so whenever you need a reminder that you rock or you need to hear it from an outside source, open your file, read about one or more of your accomplishments, and mentally give yourself a high five, and then get back to rocking, um, Uh, assemble a legion of superheroes. You know how corporate corporations have a board of directors to, in theory, make them stronger, maintain checks and balances, leverage resources and help advance the organization's vision. Why not assemble your own board of directors, directors to leverage resources to help make your career stronger, keep you in check and balance and advance your vision? If it is about like, you know, the people you surround yourself, very important. It's still very important, even though I, I've once thought like, you know, it's it's not that important. Like, you know, you know, even though I'm hanging around with people who might not be the best for me, it's it's totally okay. Like it is okay to some degree. Like, you know, don't get me wrong, don't just cut everybody out because they did want something that's not in your kinda uh yeah, way of living your life or some shit like this. Just, you know, keep an eye on it. Um so my friend Alison Wade, president of conferences, training and consulting at Techwell, calls her personal board of direction her row. Those are the people she invites to sit, uh, to sit spitting distance from the stage, cheer her on, challenge her and review her performance. I call mine my legion of superheroes because I think that idea of joining forces to do good in the corporate galaxy. Um, I don't know, if I understand that, you know, I still think getting real feedback and honest feedback is very important. Not like always, you know, listening to the people who are actually cheering you up, always listening to the people who are actually reviewing your performance, always good, like, you know, everything is fine. Still think that negative feedback or feedback that's quite honest and real 
from everybody because there totally will be one person who might just be like, okay, no, I didn't enjoy this movie or some shit like this. There will always be, like always. Uh, the point is to assemble a group of diverse humans who have your back. They shouldn't be diverse in all directions, cultural background, thinking skill and set and so on. So meet once a week or once a month or once a quarter. Share your experiences, fears, creative ideas, aspirations. Celebrate each other's accomplishments, accomplishments, challenge and support each other, discover what you are capable of doing when you combine your powers. Actually, pretty nice. Um, Ask for a raise in haiku. Disclaimer, I'm not promising this technique will get you a raise, but I'm not promising it won't either. So I did crowdsource. Uh, I did crowdsource it with several hundred creative tree spacers, and based on their response, it appears uh, this exercise works. So at least as a creative way to blow off steam about being underpaid and/or celebrate your unique value in a job, even when your boss doesn't seem to be celebrating, and even if it doesn't get a zero added to your back, zero added to your paycheck right away. It will get you noticed and maybe pave the way for a future race. So a haiku is a Japanese poem that uses five syllables for the first line, seven syllables for the second and five syllables for the third line. And it generally celebrates the beauty of the, of the natural world. We are going to put out our, uh, our own twist on it and use it to write a poem that celebrates the beauty of what you bring to the workplace. So here is an example. Now I've got to be a little bit faster because I'm actually over my 30 minutes. But still, I want to go through the whole thing because it's feeling like, okay, now actually there is something that's that's quite interesting and great, I guess. So I'm just going to read through it and end the episodes then uh, right after that, I guess. So I've done a great job. She agreed with me, then said yes to the request. I really kind of thought like like... Yeah, it's gonna rhyme or something. So I've done a great job. She greeted with she agreed with me, then said yes to the request. Yeah. I I hope that you know there were some rhymes in there. So once you've written your haiku, you will want to deliver it to your boss in a creative way. You could email it to yourself or CC her on Employee Appreciation Day. Or have the florist write it on the card that accompanies the flowers or cupcakes or both you sent him for his work anniversary. Or give it to her at the holiday gift exchange along with an empty envelope. Um, but why would you want to deliver it to your boss? Is it like, okay, you know, if you're just giving it to him or her, then he or him or he or she is going to return it to some way because maybe they like it, maybe they feel like, okay, feels great. It's okay, I'm gonna tell it to you, because you remind me on those things. But yeah. Uh, or you might go to the go the slightly more sincere route and tell her uh, in haiku that her leadership is part of why you are thriving. Um, which would be great. Like, you know, if you're really kind of being honest, think that's very important, and you're like, okay, you know, I really love this person, why wouldn't I write a haiku for them? Totally great, totally great. Um, do whatever feels right to you as long as it shows that you have got awesome creative impulses, that you come up with unique approaches to address everyday challenges and that you are capable of seeing the value you bring to work. At the end of the day, your value resides in your being in your being uniquely qualified to be you. And I think that's completely true. Like we are all individuals and we are all so amazing really amazing like like uh, let's say most of us i do want to just exclude some people who are still amazing but in a negative way and i guess you do just know whom i'm referring to i guess like to the group of people or whatever you want to tell them or uh kind of call them um but yeah this is it with the episode i hope that you've enjoyed it i really have enjoyed it um would have been nice if i could just you know talk a little bit more about it and to actually kind of you know take my time actually going through everything like talking about everything that i was willing to talk about because i I wasn't quite able because i do just have to be a little bit faster than on the other days i guess but but yeah thank you very very fucking much 
for actually, and this actually, um, so excerpted with permission from the new book, Creative Tree Spanning, How to Put the Spark and Joy Back into Your Work and Life by Tania Catan from the Penguin uh, Random House LLC published and whatsoever. So yeah, I wish you the best health, wealth, happiness and success and still I really please you to really remind yourself on how you going to be remembered. If it's going to be a good way, a bad way, you basically decide.